Hey, Mariner fans, welcome back to another season of Monday Mojo. Uh, before we kick it off into the episode, a couple housekeeping items. We recorded this episode January 7th, and about 20 minutes after the episode, uh, Justin Topa was acquired from the Brewers in exchange for right-handed pitcher Joseph Hernandez. And obviously, later January 7th, uh, about 9 o'clock Pacific time, the bigger news of the day, uh, bigger news of the offseason, biggest news of the offseason for the Mariners as of late, at least. Uh, AJ Pollock, one-year deal, $7 million. That's going to be a great pickup, I think, for, for the Mariners, for Jared Kalnick specifically. I think he's going to be used as a platoon option. Mashes, lefties, got a 935 OPS against him last year. That's AJ Pollock. And so could be a great platoon option for Jared Kalnick. But um, before I let you go here, like, comment, and subscribe. We need you guys to do that. Help us help you get you more of this content, more of that stuff. But somewhere in this interview, last thing I'll leave you with is a teaser to Monday Mojo's guests, our first in-person interview coming place this Friday at Jan uh, January 7th. And the gentleman that we're interviewing, without giving it away right now, he's going to be able to give us a lot of insights into things like AJ Pollock, why we acquired him, what the process was like of going to acquire him, of any player that we acquire. Give me a lot here. But uh, put your seatbelts on, stay strapped in. It's a great, great episode. Pumped to be back. It's the year of the Mariners. Michael Jordan here, 2023. Go M's. Hey, Mariner fans. Welcome to 2023. Happy New Year, and thanks for joining us again. Uh, we're glad to have you back. Um, and we can confidently say that this is the year of the Mariner. And no, actually, I'm going to go a little off script here. Remember that tweet you sent me that oh, was uh, some guy had predi predicted the World Series winners from, oh, yeah, uh, like 2000. 15 or something on, on to like has he gotten them all right in seattle's up no there? last on year he, he messed up last year he last year he predicted the phillies to win it God, oh close. damn <laughs> yeah and then next year um, he's predicting the Mariners. next year so. yeah or this year he had yeah. 2023 as as the mariners the world series winners and then next year was someone else and then 2024 was also the mariners 2025 so, 23 and right. 25 that's right that's right um, so we're in a great time. It's a great time to be alive. I'm Max Schwabi back with Chris Soba, uh, Chris Weifel and Evan Barron as our producer and happy new year, friends. Um, we're going to start off just with some simple shit. What have we been off to? Uh, or I'm sorry, up to <laughs> the off season. Yeah, well, I'll go first because I'm more important. Um, the gang here. Everyone golfs except for me. So <clears throat> I decided to hop on the train, got some new clubs. Um, I'm a lefty, and that was a hell of a process to go through. But what did you, you get clubs from Costco? No, I didn't get no. <laughs> I, I ended up dropping like $700, uh, went to Pro Golf Discount, and got a Cobra driver. I got a gap wedge, seven iron, nine iron. And a putter. Okay. Saving the rest for a later date. I don't want to break the bank too quickly. Um, big Husky football season. Hold on, hold right, on. So no, no long irons, no wood? N not yet. Interesting. I'm Wait, and also, you're a lefty as well? You didn't know this? Because I'm a lefty and Chris is a lefty. No. What? What? Chris, you're a lefty, right. aren't you? I'm normal. I'm normal, man. Oh, I remember I, I played. I thought you were a lefty. Well, well, this is someone else. news to me. You and I, I played together. Clubs. I know. I'm thinking of someone else. I thought you were a lefty as well. Anyway, Max, we got to go play. I'll let you use I, my clubs. I'd You're an embarrassment with your four of clubs. I'll give you. Okay. I'll, I'll give you some clubs. We well, you know where we can play. Maybe. Should Spring be training. Right maybe. Now. So Ooh. that's right. As a as a as a team here, we're going to down to Peoria to watch. Uh, what two or three Mariner games? Two Mariner games. Yeah, we're going. Uh, we're flying on March 26, which I believe is a Thursday. Mm -hmm. I want to say. And the last two games of spring training are the that Friday and Saturday. And so the World Baseball Classic will be finished. Julio and if Luis Castillo goes, um, they'll be back. So in time see. for that. Exactly. For that, yeah. So we'll see him. 
Um, that's a great idea, though. We can go see, see your golf skills in Arizona. I have a good swing, man. And I'm excited to show all of you. Uh, outside of that, uh, I've been working like a dog and um, watching football. Go dogs and go Hawks. Let's see if we can post this, this shit up on uh, this Sunday. Oh, yeah. uh, Sobo, wh- wh- what have you been up to? Man, you know, same, same stuff. I've uh, been following the Mariners like crazy of everything that's been going on, which isn't much. It's been a slow off season, but we'll dive into that as we as we keep talking here. Mm-hmm. Um, work, man, just working like crazy. Your boy's wifed up, not like married, but he's got a girlfriend now. That's <laughs> that's that's new. Um, she's great. And uh, not much, man. It's same old me. New Year, same me. That's okay. Great. Just with the girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. With the girlfriend. Zweifel, what about you, dude? Wait, no, 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 no. Before you say anything, Zweifel, I wrote down what you've been doing uh, since. Um, yeah. What do you think? The off season. I, I wrote here. Out here in Enumclaw. Yeah. Out, out in Enumclaw, Washington. Been huddling in a corner in the dark, watching football every Sunday and doesn't let anyone distract him and starts crying if he is distracted. <laughs> And I just learned that he's now a manager uh, at his job half of the time. And when he is a manager, he doesn't make as much money. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. So anything, yeah. What else did I miss? <laughs> uh, I'm not huddled in the corner um, and the lights well, are on. Corner. <laughs> it's dim. Yeah. No, but I'm usually, it's like, like a football party, you know, so it's very social. I'm not, I'm not by myself or anything, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I value my football time. Uh, I'm not just a baseball guy, you know. Yeah. I like football. Yeah. I like yeah. the Seahawks, and and uh, I do think we win um, against the Rams. But mm-hmm. then we got to hope that the Lions win, who aren't incentivized to win. Exactly. Well, I, I mean, they they are. They want to beat the Packers. They want to knock them out. But if we win, the Lions can't win, right. and then they play after us. So mm-hmm. kind of a bummer that the NFL did that to us. I totally um, agree. Oh, one thing that I've been getting into, and it's like a popular thing on Instagram, is the uh, the ice plunges. Have you guys seen those? That was like 10 years ago. Uh, I don't know. They made a pretty big comeback. I feel like they're they're more popular than ever. But yeah, getting into really cold water makes you feel electric. Yeah. And uh, then, then hitting the sauna after that, that oh. was pretty good. Yeah, that's nice. Hey, but uh, I noticed you guys are rocking uh, some Monday Mojo merch. That's right. Um, how do I get one? Tell, tell our prototypes. listeners how you these get prototypes. one. So yeah, that, that's actually a good housekeeping topic to bring up. Uh, been in, in, in works and we got these ordered and now just in conversations with some suppliers trying to figure out where we can get the best deal. And so hopefully negotiate. we can be getting some actual merchandise for the listeners coming up. But this is, you guys are looking. Yeah, we got the Monday Mojo hoodie. Got a Julio Rodriguez special design t-shirt with some Those fun pretty dope. on the back. And uh, we got a Monday Mojo white tee as well, similar to the hoodie. But mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion, yeah, that's going to be sweet. What about on that Julio shirt? We can talk about it later. But that that design on the back and then like on your shirt, we just have that logo on the front. So you, you get yeah, to we see, can do that. Yeah, you know, prototype. That's prototype. a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Make it's it a little much on the front, I think. <laughs> well, but it's a cool drawing. I hooked you is. up with my my artist. Um, yeah, I agree. I think we're going to be, uh, repping a lot of Julio this year. Um, one last thing, if you're, if, if you've been getting up to the mountain, good for you. Uh, I'm a snowboarder. I'm trying to teach myself how to ski this year as well. Um, but if you're hitting the mountain over the globe, good for you. What do we want to talk about this episode? Let's dive into it. I'm getting bored here. Just listening to you talk about snowboarding. Great. So, the offseason thus far. The Seattle Mariners on Saturday, January 7th at 2.12 p.m. have spent the least amount of money of any franchise in the MLB during the offseason. Even more than the A's, or less than the A's. Less than the A's. And Pirates. The Milwaukee Brewers, I believe it was Wade Miley, who they signed for like $4 million some odd dollars. Uh, he is, that, that made the Milwaukee Brewers the second uh, lowest spenders. Mm-hmm. We are now the lowest. And so, there's just the great debate on Twitter. Every Mariners fans experiencing it, you know, what the hell is ownership doing? They promised that in the, this offseason they'd open the checkbook, they'd spend. You know, we've done – Jerry's done what he's 
said he's going to do, he, he's needed to do, he's hit the checkpoints that ownership has wanted. He's built the right pieces. And there was an awesome free agent market. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. people are pissed. Some people are like, what are we doing? Some people are content and maybe not content, but not pissed off. And I'm going to be in that group. I'm not pissed off at all. Um, we did our signings with spending a lot, you know, do the Julio, the Julio Rodriguez contract. We traded for Luis Castillo. We signed him and locked him up. We uh, obviously got Colton Wong and Teoscar Hernandez. Those are both upgrades from what we had in those positions last year with Adam Frazier and Mitch Hanniger. Teoscar Hernandez is a very, in my opinion, similar player to Mitch Hanniger. Um, I think he's going to bring a lot, a lot of, you know, I think Zweifel actually, you have him as your comp, right? Mitch Hanniger as, as Teoscar's comp. Yeah, I mean they, they oh, go about it, it a little more. bit. Oh yeah, Never mind. they go about it in like a little bit different style. But as far as the numbers are concerned, I mean, uh, Teoscar career slugging percentage of four ninety nine, OPS of eight nineteen, and then Hanniger's four seventy six, eight eleven OPS. So yeah, pretty similar. Yep. Um, would you say that he's got a better arm than Mitch? No, I mean, Mitch, that's the one thing that Mitch did really well. And I mean, it's Teoscar has a really good arm as well. But I mean, Mitch, as far as his arm um, in right field, it's it's top class. But his range, I mean, as a defender, that's why it was kind of weird. Or, or uh, people give you like a side eye when you're like, yeah, Mitch ain't, isn't the best defender. They're like, yeah, dude, I just saw him hose out a guy from the wall at second base. It's like, yeah, well, that's the one thing he does well on the defensive side. It's like he has a really nice arm. But um, range is 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 a concern with Mitch. And I mean, he's gone anyways. Teoscar, uh, it's kind of the same thing. They're eerily similar players. I mean, he has yeah. a huge arm. He's not going to be the most rangy defender. Um, he's, he's a decent athlete. Um, but you know, it's, we got him for his bat and you know, we did. everyone who's we did. been watching Mariner baseball for the last two decades knows that, uh, yeah. hitting is our challenge. So, mm -hmm. you know, getting a big bat in the lineup, it's going to look a lot like Mitch, Mitch Hanniger, So, And especially yep. the way that we use our outfield with a lot of platoon going on. Kelnick yeah. will be facing right-handed pitching. And with Teoscar Hernandez being a right-handed batter, he's going to be in that during the left-handed pitchers, right? And since 2001, got a stat here, 237 plate appearances. He's got a 336 batting average. He's got a 1.080 OPS, 74 hits, 41 extra base hits, 20 homers, only 14 walks. So he's not walking much for left-handed batters, which probably will increase being on the Seattle Mariners. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty damn good numbers. Pretty yeah. good numbers for yeah. coming against the left-handed left -handed pitchers. And so when we use that platoon going on, dude, if Kelnick can just come on, just come out of your shell. Uh, he's working well, hard. I, I think we all know it. And if he can come Kelnick, out of that shell, if he can come out of that shell, man, that, that'll be a game changer. That'll make the this – for the people who think this offseason has been a, a failure, that'll change everything. Yeah. It will, but I mean, you're, and I, I think that's what Jerry's content on doing, unless, you know, something comes down the pipe here, but it's getting pretty late in the offseason. Um, I think he's content in, in rolling Jared out there, but um, to kind of play devil's advocate, I mean, I, I don't know that that's really a great option. I mean, you want to see the young kid grow, and I actually believe in Jared but it's a question mark and you don't, you want to go into the season with as little question marks, especially, you know, in an important season like this as you can. And um, we'll see him probably platoon right now with a guy like Sam Haggerty. You'll see Haggerty from the right side hitting against the lefties oh, and I then um, left-handed oh. Jared Kelnick against the righties. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would still like to see Jerry, Jerry do something. I don't know if we want to dive into the, um, the free agent guys that we missed, but, um, I was, I was pretty interested in, in a guy like AJ Pollock, um, who is a, a, a right-hander who could hit lefties, you know, to platoon with Jared. Right. Um, he's still out there, but I mean, it doesn't seem like Jerry wants to, to pay a lot for, for or overpay for any of these guys that they see as, you know, kind of, uh, fringe, fringe guys for him. So, but, you know, but here lies the question, is it Jerry or is it ownership? It's ownership. It's 100% yeah. ownership. I, I don't think it has anything to do with Jerry. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it'd be interesting, but I mean, I think a lot of these numbers that were coming through for these guys that aren't like cornerstone players, 
even uh, the cornerstone guys went for uh, you know huge money and then like even like the ancillary pieces that were coming in were like still like you're looking at me like that guy got this like no way i would never pay him that so I, you know Xander bogart's doing 13 years yeah padres that to me was insane mm-hmm. i mean the and, padres you know, these... just in general they were throwing out contracts to anybody and everybody right. that's you know that's the ownership that the padres has same with the dodgers obviously stephen cohen and the mets yankees you know they're they're the big spenders and ownership has told us in seattle we are a mid-market team Max and I were talking about this before we were recording, yeah. but you think about it in the geography of Seattle and the competition of MLB teams that we have close to us, which isn't any. The closest are reside in California. So Montana, Idaho, Oregon, they are all fans of the Seattle Mariners. They're not, we're not fighting another team for market control. The Yankees, they have the Mets. The Mets have the Yankees, obviously. In 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 California, there's four teams in, in California. And you just look at most of them are spending big bucks because they have to compete with the other teams in their market. If they want to be the the best, if they want to be making money and we don't have anybody to compete with. So from what I think is ownership obviously understands that they're not going to change their market value. They're going to stay with considering us that mid market. And if we didn't have a general manager like Jerry DePoto, the Seattle Mariners franchise would be what it's always been since 2001. And that's been, trash it's been terrible we've never actually been able to develop a farm system with good players and trade for key pieces and and build them and sign them and keep them in seattle jerry depoto has done all of that but he can't make ownership give them the money that they'll that maybe they're promising maybe they're not but if we didn't have jerry depoto at the helm who knows where we'd be he's got that billy bean approach and he's able to make something out of nothing but if he can only, that's all he can do. And so we're going to have to, as I've said all along in Jerry, I trust. And thank God for him, because if we didn't have him, we'd have a Jack Zarenjic leading the, the helm and we'd be nowhere. But, but, but if you're, if you're in ownership for the Mariners and you look at the objective fact that we have spent less than any other, other team, they don't care. Well, I, I don't but, think, but wasn't, wasn't there a, an explicit conversation you know, had that was like, Hey, look, like we will open up the checkbook and we will get more players because we are, uh, you know, we went to the playoffs this year and we want to do more of it now. And in order to do that, like we, we, we need to drop some dollars. I think the, the main thing is, is that do you want to go out and spend money on guys and overpay guys or do you want to sign guys that are we already have do you want to extend a, a logan gilbert you want to have money to extend a george kirby you're going to have to you know give these guys a lot of money cal raleigh is going to be coming up i mean these guys are premium players that are young and we you know developed them we need money to to pay those guys so it's a little early to say that stan's just not going to do anything he's not going to open up the checkbook Right now, is it a little confusing to me? Yeah, I think there's guys out there that would help this 2023 ball club, but it's kind of like what Chris said. You know, Jerry's got us all the way here. I like the 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 uh, trajectory of the organization. Last year, they did open up the checkbook and they they spent on Robbie Ray. Uh, they gave you know they opened up the checkbook big time on Julio, which was a no brainer. But I mean, they gave him you know a lot of a lot of money, over 300 million. So. Uh, I don't know. Was it 300 million? He can't, it's a weird contract where he it's, can it's make, an insane contract. We won't even make it. up to. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, the thing is, is that, uh, I think I turn again. Yeah, so I, I like, I, I, I like the point you make and Chris and I were, Soba and I were discussing before this, right? Like we, we were watching, I don't know, some interview, uh, but we basically got the opinion that Jerry's a big fan to your point, Swifle. No, no, this has been stated. It's an article from Ryan Divish. Right. Where where Jerry's a big fan of, of keeping players on the team. It's draft, trade, and develop. That's right. That, that's his Versus, Versus landing, landing yeah. big free agency moves. Yep. So, I mean, this could be like the mastermind plan, like overall, um, which would be a little bit frustrating, you know, and it, we have i think every right to be a little bit upset because like we're so hungry for this shit right like we got a little taste of the playoffs last season um and now we're like well we want more 
so there's the catch 22 of like, well, what's the right approach to keep this sustainable? We do. Um, I mean, but we added, you know, Colton Wong in a trade. We added exactly. Oscar in a trade. I think those pieces make us a little better, but I mean, if you're comparing like we did earlier, a t- t- Oscar to a Hanniger, we didn't have Hanniger all year last year. So hopefully if we get a full healthy T Oscar, that's like having a Mitch for, for the whole year. Um, yeah. Colton Wong is, is a better second baseman in almost every way than Adam Frazier. And that's yeah. not knocking Adam Frazier. I think Adam Frazier is pretty much a league average second baseman. Colton Wong's going to give you, I mean, his numbers here, he was a, uh, 118 WRC plus guy last year. So 18% better than, than league average 250 average 15 bombs. So more power 770 mm-hmm. OPS 770 OPS and league averages. And Adam Frazier's OPS was, was 612 last year. So that's a yeah. 612 to 770 upgrade. Yeah. But I mean, Adam, that wasn't even Adam Frazier. That was a down Adam Frazier. Like, yeah. you know, but, but it's, it's, it's a, the Adam Frazier we got. It is so the Adam Frazier. That to the, to the but I mean, um, as I've said, I mean, you have a right to be frustrated, Max, is that right now in left field. Every fan has a right to be frustrated. Yeah. The question. Right now in left it. field, I'm not with comfortable it. with what we see. At DH right now would be Tom Murphy. Um, <laughs> that's who's listed as our DH. So <laughs> yeah. that can't that's be good. good. But, <laughs> no, that's not going to work, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not a playoff. That's not a playoff uh, left field and DH no. spot. But there's some guys out there. Trey Mancini's still out there, even though. We saw him just completely struggle with the Astros down, I don't the, want down the stretch. I know. I, from For that reason, I don't want him. I was like, last reason, year when he came up in the playoffs, I was like, oh, here's a break. Yeah. We right. can relax. I got a question for the group um, since we're talking about free agency. And I've noticed kind of this trend where um, a lot of these teams that have signed uh, Bogarts and Judge have locked him down to like over 10 years. And so, Chris, we've had this, this discussion. So is it worth it? to sign these guys, you know, until they're 40, if you, if you end up getting one world series championship out of these right. major contracts, uh, do you think it's worth it? Or do you think it should be more short-term contracts? It's directed to me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. the whole group. I'll whole take group. the first one. I think um, the, it's something that we can't entertain because this is not a reality for us as Mariner fans, but hypothetically, yeah, hypothetically, hypothetically, yeah. It's not the proven way of success. It just isn't. When you spend that much money and that much committed time to somebody, it's a lot. Like the Robinson Cano tra- trade that we did actually worked out really well. And we were fortunately able to dump his contract to the Mets. That was a perfect scenario, I guess, for us. But you look at like the Rangers when they've always, they're, they've, I think of them as spending a lot of big money. In, yeah. Like, like A Rod, that never worked out for them way back when. Well, you, but you also have the Rangers, what they're doing right now. Yeah, and what they're doing right now with Simeon, with Jacob Degrom, and, and Andrew Heaney and Simeon. Right. Yeah. So to it's be fair, um, I don't, I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. So, to be fair with the A Rod deal, they put nothing around him. So I mean, it's like, yeah, you can spend that much on one player, but if you put no one around him, it's never going to work. Um, but even you know, right now, I don't think the Rangers are like a serious threat. I mean. They, they've added some big names, but I mean, is DeGrom going to stay healthy? You know, last year, Simeon and, and Seager, they paid all that money to them. You know, when the rain, when you saw the Rangers on your schedule, you're like, Hey, yeah, we was, got yeah, two right. guys to worry we about. Excited. Yeah. And we'll right. be fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I, I like the, the slow burn. I like the uh, build up your prospects, pay your guys in house, pay them, you know, early. So you can get them on a little bit of a deal like we did with Julio. And um you know, that also builds like team chemistry. It's like when you're patchworking sure. and just like bringing in these huge superstars to like, be like, Hey, you're the new face. It's like, you know, the other guys are looking around like, okay, yeah. But like, uh, I've been here and I've been, you know, given mm-hmm. everything to this team and I'm a, you know, a good player and you guys are just gonna let me walk in free agency. It's like, um, I, I like keeping a, you know, we've, we've kept it pretty, uh, tight, tight to the vest. Like, you know, we're, re-signing our players i consider uh you know i or i I think that we're going to keep doing that with uh the guys that we got coming up and i like that format more than big patchwork jobs of giving a guy 300 million i yeah i mean the way that you guys put it i agree i think the best path for i mean for the longest time we've been saying even the past two years of the podcast right like we have a great farm system 
and we have a lot of players with a lot of potential. Um, but when is it right? Like what's it all worth if we don't watch these guys actually develop themselves? So like, well, we could well, go out, I mean, but, but like if we could go out and pick up like Carlos Correa, who I do want to touch on, um, like, I don't think that can hurt. I mean, the only but the well, only if, thing if, if we pick up Carlos Correa today, today, if we no no today if we pick up Carlos Correa, it's gonna okay. be like a bad example. Two year deal, huh? It'd be a two year deal. Like he's feeling oh. his physicals with with the Giants <laughs> and then with the Mets, and like now nobody knows what's going on with him, and Dude. his camp seems to be in contact with two other teams. I think one of them is back with the Twins. Like nobody knows what's going on with Carlos Correa. It's fucking insane. Is he is the man dying or? Zweifel, do you do you know anything about this? Is there an internal like doctor report that he has some sort of death coming <clears throat> in the near you know next two three years? His life is like short, and they know that now. And they're like, oh, we you know we'll do a three year contract. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't know exactly what it is, but he it's like you said, he's failing physicals left and right, and um, you know, it's Smoking cause pot? for concern when you're going to pay a guy a bunch of money. So I think yeah, he's going to get a short term deal somewhere. Someone's going to take the risk and give him like you know. 25 30 million on uh you know a one year deal or 60 million for two but uh yeah i don't know and Carlos also Perez. what we're looking for right in in what jerry depoto has always said is how the player fits in with the clubhouse right mm -hmm. you know how do they gel with the team and whatnot and i'm not sure we we know we know Carlos Correa is he's uh, had to chirp back at other players whether it's on the Mariners or whether it's on another another organization, um, Joe Kelly for example mm -hmm. their relationship is amazing, but <laughs> we got to make sure they gel and they, and they fit in the clubhouse and I want to step back to like Colton Wong here for a second because I do got some good notes on him and why I Jerry why I think Jerry was so high on him we I, we know that Jerry's been targeting Colton Wong for over a year maybe longer and he finally got him and. Colton Wong has a really cool story when he was drafted by the Cardinals in 2011, made his debut in 2013 for them during his first year of MLB ball. He made it to the world series with the Cardinals and in his first action in the world series, he got substituted as a pinch runner to first base in the ninth inning with two outs. He got picked off before a pitch was thrown and the oh. game was ended. Yeah, that was his first experience in the World Series. And after that, I believe his mom actually had passed away the next uh, that offseason. He got in a really big rut and he had to dig himself out. It was, you know, tough mental part for him. And he's just gone through a lot of stuff and he's come out on top and he's getting better. It seems, you know, since he left St. Louis and went to Milwaukee, his power has been coming. Last year, he had a somewhat of a, a down year on the defensive side thank god we got a man by the name of perry hill <laughs> over here in seattle and he's going to do wonders with him i think the shift getting banned and uh is going to help colton wong tremendously as well he is an athlete and second base you're going to need somebody over there who's maybe more closer to a shortstop capability mm -hmm. right because they're going to have to cover so much more ground adam frazier ain't that guy he ain't it yeah. and so I'm, I'm glad that you know we have a guy like colton wong who i think he is 31 I believe. No, but, I, I, I think he's 30. Is he 30? Yeah, right around there. He's, right he's, he's going to be playing his year 32 season. How, okay. so how he's, old is Mitch? Doesn't matter. Teoscar Hernandez, though, is oh, uh, 30, 30 years old, sorry. scheduled yeah, to hit right. free agency okay. also next yeah. season. That's what I was thinking of. Sorry. But where I'm going with this is Colton Wong is I've, – I've listened to some interviews, watched them, and the way this guy presents himself, he's going to be such an awesome fit in our culture, in our clubhouse. The team's going to love him. Um, and I think he's just going to gel tremendously. And so he's going to be a great guy. And I would say the same thing about Teoscar Hernandez, the vibes mm -hmm. and the culture that he brings, uh, that he brought into the Blue Jays clubhouse. Yeah. You know, nothing but great things said by his uh, teammates and coaches about the way he conducts his business and enjoys being on the field. So those are two guys that I think are just going to, they're going to fit right in immediately. Yeah. So that said, like the way I'm seeing it, we're, you know, we're just missing a left fielder and a DH. Big time. Yeah, and some pitchers and pitching. Starting yeah, pitching. Starting pitching. I mean, we're, we're, we still got Chris Flexen and Marco Gonzalez. Uh, I like Flexen. Okay. I already have. Right, we still I have always Marco. have. We still have, well, I do too, but we still have Marco And we have Marco. We have him rounding. I mean, our out. starting just... pitching is going to be our strength, but I mean, you can always add. Is it? Yeah, of course. 
Robbie Ray, is, Luis Castillo, Robbie Ray, George Gilby, Kirby, Castillo. and Logan Gilbert. Oh, and Kirby. Yeah. What are you talking about? And they'll probably call up Emerson Hancock uh, yeah. as well. So that's another. Wait, so what was your comment on pitching? We have a great bullpen. Yeah, I want one more starting pitcher. You yeah, want no, one that's more? That's fine. Yeah, you can, I, I you think can we have to have four or five. I think we have. I think we have to get a DH before we get another starting pitcher. Sure, sure. You just asked, what else do we need? So I answered. Oh. Well, sure. I disagree. I think our pitching is fine. What like, about the bullpen, though? I mean, don't we bullpen? Maybe need a lefty because, like, when you saw last year with yes. we just the playoffs with going with Ray in the ninth and yeah. kind of the lefty that, that you need. Brutal. Um, <laughs> I would like to see us kind of address that area in the bullpen. Is yeah. get, get a lefty in there that can. Um, that just brought up yeah. the biggest like <laughs> I didn't mean to bring it down the mood there, but type shit. Yeah. If we're if we're trying to get past the Astros. Oh, let's put another... Robbie Ray in because he's a lefty. And let's hey. throw <laughs> let's throw um God, I even forget his name. That's how much I fucking Jordan Alvarez. Yeah, Jordan. Let's throw Jordan a nice juicy meatball right down Broadway. But yeah, with that... a lefty. But get this with a lefty. That was probably one of the toughest games I've ever watched. I remember that moment vividly. Hey, but the beauty of being human and being able to feel those emotions in itself, that was nice. Able to, able to feel something that strong. You know, that's how you get reminded you're a human being. Dogs hey, can't uh, feel that. Animals can't feel that. Is we this can. a philosophical podcast or is this a Mariners podcast? Uh, hey, maybe we can get uh, – think, think about that, Mariners fans. Let me talk to his wife. Well, think about <laughs> – I'm going to take you back. I know we don't want to go back. Oh, God. I was trying to make take you stop back talking. Him. Yeah. No, no. We're going to go back to this Jordan Alvarez homer. We're going to revisit it. And we're going to accept to live with this, okay? Because you got you to do that sometimes. You got to accept to live with something, okay? I'm starting to get real uncomfortable right now. <laughs> Jordan Alvarez took Robbie Ray deep when we were about to win game one against the Astros. and uh, Which would know, have set the course for the rest of the series. Set the course for the series. And – we that, would have lost game two, game, and then we should have won game three yeah. at home, and then we would have won game four at home. Looking back at it, though, that pain that we felt, it made us know that we're human, and that's what I'm saying. Sure. That's really beautiful and everything, yeah. dude. I've always known I was a human for, like, a long time now. Never forget? So, yeah, I didn't I'm need glad the that, reminder. Yeah, I Sometimes I don't like being reminded that I'm human, you know? Yeah, I don't There's like this. There's thing called mindfulness, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, know about it. We've talked, last year we talked about a lot about meditation. We did. But, um, with Andy McKay, actually. That's right. We had a great meditation talk with Andy McKay. That's right. <laughs> it's very important. But um, it sounds like if you ever want to meditate, you just watch the replay of Jordan taking that's Robbie not, Ray deep. That's not what I'm saying. And that, and that. <laughs> That that is what humbles you is what I'm hearing. Um. So anyway, um, how about Arson Judge? Where's he headed? Uh, God damn it! Well, he's obviously <laughs> back with New York. I just I think what I'm so sorry for San Francisco Giants fans. For six yeah. minutes, they thought that they had Arson Judge this off season. <laughs> uh, John Heyman just a grammar mistake and a flat out mistake of wrong reporting. I don't know how this guy still has a job, but um, straight sorry up. Sorry for that. Show six minutes of love and then feeling like a human. There you go. Pain, pain, San Francisco. Well, and then pain the again for you, San Francisco, right Carlos Correa, Correa. Ex exactly for six days. So six minutes, Arson judge, six days, Carlos Correa. And as we all know, that's not happening for them anymore. What a ouch, ouch. That's got to hurt. At least, Hey, at least we're not having that happen to us. Hmm. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. I don't know sure. if you've ever heard the story of the Chinese farmer. It, it's a long one i don't know if we should get into it <laughs> but pretty much the uh the basis of the story is uh is it good or bad maybe you don't know if that's good or bad maybe they dodged a bullet by not getting uh, arson judge i actually think that one does hurt because uh you can pretty much project that that guy's gonna be a friggin' superstar stud forever yeah but, uh he's, as far as the carlos captain. correa maybe they dodged a bullet you know Maybe they, maybe they, it was the perfect thing to happen that he failed his physical. And then they're not paying a guy that's 43 and can barely walk uh, I, to be their I, shortstop. Yeah. I want to know what's wrong with Carlos so badly. We'll find out hopefully soon enough, but. Will we? Uh, hopefully. I don't know. Unless nobody signs it. Sounds, it sounds like they're keeping it close to their chest. All right. Next topic. No, is... no, no, no. Hold on. My, my, my next topic was just to go over some of the big 
names that have moved across MLB. You, you can, yeah, this is Titan. I want Brian Reynolds, and I want to talk about Brian Reynolds real quick. Okay, go ahead. Sweet. Who's Brian Reynolds? Stop, stop, stop. Who's Brian Reynolds? I had to, no. I had to tell Max before this episode. I was talking off air with Max, educating him about Carlos Correa. He thought oh, Carlos I, Correa I got mixed up with George Springer. He, he goes, "Oh, Carlos Correa is he still on the Blue Jays?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Oh God, that's that's." George you Springer. know what? Max plays his role really well, though. Yeah, I do, I do. And then he goes, I, and then he goes, "Oh, is he, I, is he still? Oh, he's on the Twins. He's on the Twins." It's like. Can, he, can we can we take a step back and remember that this this podcast is designed? Yes, of course you have your baseball nerds like you 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 guys. I'm just like I've been through and through. You know, I played the sport for many years, and you know, I I love the Mariners with all my heart. But I you know, I represent I in my opinion. I'm just like, do you live under a rock? Of our like, listeners. how do you not? How did you not know about the Carlos Correa saga? Everybody know about it. No. Yeah. Everybody. That one's pretty bad. I, I would probably say talking about it. They're not, but. And I, I would say you should know who Brian Reynolds is. If you've been following along, that but, had to have been uh, I mean, you know, okay. It's okay. Max. What if, what if I knew who Brian Reynolds was, but I just was asking that question to make sure that if there mm. is a li- listeners out there, which I'm sure there is. Right. Who doesn't that know don't who know who Reynolds Brian is? Reynolds is. Will you just answer the goddamn question? Brian Reynolds <laughs> is a center fielder for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And Thank you. Brian Reynolds Jesus. declined a two-year contract last season with the Pittsburgh Pirates and was in, uh, was no, excuse me, he signed a two-year extension with them and was going to hit free agency this year, didn't. And the Pirates, or he ex- uh, requested a trade, something along those lines. Yes. He did request a trade. I've wanted him. I think Jerry's been wanting him for a long time. Mm. They wanted like guys like Julio, Kelnick, Hancock, yeah. and Jerry's like bye. And so now we're trying like teams are trying to throw other packages. It came out that the Pirates offered him a six-year, seventy-five million dollar contract. Yeah, which Yet, is just bad. <laughs> they're asking for like one hundred and fifty million, two hundred million dollar like you know ROIs. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? It makes no sense. What, well, it shows their intention that they don't, they're not serious about they're not signing. Serious. They're not, they're a joke. They're not serious. And that's good for us as Mariner fans, because if they're not serious about signing him, then they probably want to get something back for him via trade. And he's a hot commodity. I mean, if you're a Mariner fan, you should want this guy. He's a switch hitter. He's exactly what we need. Um, he is a center fielder, but we'd throw him over and we left. We throw field. him and left. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, he he's a, he's a guy that, would probably bat right in front of Julio. And I mean, he's going to get the best pitches he's ever got in his life. I mean, in Pittsburgh, he's pretty much the only guy they got in the lineup besides Cabrian Hayes. Um, but I would love him. Uh, I've heard that we're not a, a perfect match because they want, um, they want guys that are ready to pitch in the MLB right now. So Emerson Hancock, as good as he is, or as good as he's projected to be, they want a guy like George Kirby. They want a guy like Logan Gilbert. And it's like, okay, they, now they want so much that they're you're not getting about. George Kirby. You're not getting <laughs> Logan Gilbert. We'll give you Harry Ford. We'll never have these. I would give them Jared Kelnick. That would kind of be fun. Give him. Uh, give him. I I don't want to give him. I I, I I'm not ready for to Brian get rid Reynolds. of him. One more year. I'm not. I, I I'm not. I'm not ready to get rid of. I, I'm not Jared ready yet. I would for Brian Reynolds. I would. I'll say if we were guaranteed to be able to lock him up. Jared Kelnick pisses me off, but I'm not ready to get rid of him. Well, it, he's a kid. Yeah, let he him, is a kid. I mean, grow. so is Julio. Let him. Yeah, care, but you, you're comparing him to Julio. And, well, I'm just saying, like Julio's right, a once in a generation. Julio's a talent. god at baseball, and Jerry Kelnick is really great. But like, he acts like a child. Jerry Kelnick is been over this. I think he's trying his hardest to not act like a child anymore. I'm I'm yeah, team Jerry till I. Yeah, why I still want to keep him around? He's I know he's fucking frustrated. He should be. He wants to be good. He's trying to be good, and that's frustrating for somebody who's had success their entire career to now face adversity for the first time ever, and then to see Twitter blow up and saying that this guy sucks. There was a stupid ass comic that came out on Twitter about Jared Kelnick that just pissed me off because it was talking about it was just like shaming him. And oh, I didn't know this. I'll, I'll show you the comic later, but it was just it was just blasphemy and talking shit to Jared Kelnick and I was like damn it like if Jared's scrolling on Twitter that's mentally just gonna fuck something yeah, up and I mean, you know maybe there's those people listening they're like you know you're a professional athlete be stronger oh, be able to handle yeah. that it's like yeah. all right I get it or don't look at it whatever you know Dude, it's harder than it's 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 easier said than done I disagree 
every every professional sports player gets <laughs> goes through shit talk on social media. I mean, LeBron James deals with that shit. Yes, but right? LeBron like, James is LeBron James. You're comparing Jared Kelnick to Julio Rodriguez and LeBron James. Pick somebody he, in this category, not a superstar. I don't know, man. I just think. Look, tweeters are going to tweet, man. And, uh, and I don't even it's have unfortunate Twitter. that people, including Max, don't have a little bit more patience for a guy like that. But I will say, going into this year, a 2023, where it's very important that we build on our playoff ALDS uh, bow out that we had last year. I want to go to the ALCS. I want to go to the World Series. I want to win the World Series. Mm -hmm. Is Jared Kelnick doing that this year for us? Probably not. Do I want to see him grow? Sure. I I have patience for him. But if we could trade him for For a Brian Brian Reynolds Reynolds and get a guy who has three years of control, who is relatively young, who's already a stud, Mm -hmm. a guaranteed commodity for a maybe. uh, Yeah, yeah, I'm doing that all day. And I'd throw in a Harry Ford. I'd do a Harry Ford and Jared Kelnick for him. I would throw in a Kelnick and Hancock for him. They need what? pitching. Yeah, Harry Ford, Harry Ford, they won't they don't need him. They need pitching. They I know, pitching. I, but they don't need they don't want I mean, they this is maybe them just saying that because they really want Gilbert and Kirby, but they said that they don't have really the uh the, the desire to trade him for a prospect pitcher, which is what Emerson Hancock Emerson Hancock is. I think I I think with what we were talking about earlier on this episode with look, we got rid of some key players in our farm system last year, right. In order to get uh, Castillo and, and right. Like I think with the strategy that we've agreed upon that works best, which is acquire, develop and crush trade trade. Yeah. And trade. Well, that's Trader Jerry. It's trade. Trade, Trader trade is in that equation. Well, I, but Trader Jerry's not trading. Draft develop trade. Not right now. I, I right. He's already made two it. trades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> two. Uh, and we what? just talked about how it's we're the last whatever. Um. Oh my God! What was my point? I don't know. You <laughs> probably didn't have one. That's no, my point. I, I, I did. I did. I totally had a point. Just. just Something about Jerry Depoto spending money, trading. Oh, oh, I, I think, I think it's just like you're so willing to give up Harry Ford. You're so willing to give up Emerson Hancock, and we, we, we gave out. Uh, you know, we got rid of um, from our farm yeah, system last year. Out, figured out. No, we got who no else. Screw Marte you, is. dude. No, no, screw you. Noel <laughs> Marte. Uh, Marte, yes, right, and yes, exactly. <laughs> There's another guy too, but I, doubt, I, know, I don't I, think you're gonna get this one. I don't think so. I look, look. <laughs> Tell him. There's Evan. another guy we got rid of too, but like it's important that like in this style that Jerry Depoto works with so 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 well, we keep a healthy farm system, and then and then we we develop them, and then at you know a few years time, then we start trading them. So yeah, if but, you're, but, my point is, is if you're so willing to give up Hancock, Harry Ford, et cetera, I don't think that's sustainable because then, then what, what's that going to leave that with? The, yeah, uh, I mean, for, I, don't, I'm not, I don't just want to give up Harry Ford and Emerson Hancock, but for certain pieces and for a glaring need, yeah. like a left fielder right now, I would, um, I think Dude, he can play, but he, the beauty of Brian Reynolds is he can play any corner. He can play yeah. center field. Play center. If, what do we want to? put Julio DH for a day, give him a little bit of rest in the outfield. The switch hitting aspect is so attractive to me. I love a switch hitter. I love it so much. And Brian Reynolds is fast. He's just, he's a good, he's overall an awesome ball player who would fit tremendously in our outfield alongside yeah. Julio Rodriguez every single day. And Teoscar Hernandez in there too. And Jared Kelnick coming out there. That's such a powerful. And it's not like I just have like these like insatiable wants. Like, no, I want him. I want him. I mean, I'm not willing to give up a Kirby. I'm not willing to give up a Gilbert. I do have a price though. And it's just that my price is those prospects. And you know what? You you get a solid core at the MLB level. Yes. You've depleted your farm system a little bit, but it's not like we would be, you know, a bottom 10 farm system. We'd go down a lot. Um, (laughs) If your farm system, I would say is consistently in the top tier. That is not a good thing. It's not a good thing because you are not trading them for proven talent. You are, those are just, I get rankings, that. Sure. Right? They're just rankings. And so you well, have, what I'm to saying is there's to, a happy medium. There is. And guess what? And we've I think so we've reached far. a happy medium. And so you want to keep the people we have and not trade them anymore. 
Is yes. that what you're saying? Because because we've gotten rid of some real superstars, and yeah. now we still have a handful left. We don't know if they're superstars yet. <clears throat> they're still prospects. You know, Max, it's the one not that's crazy asking for, for a new pitcher, keep... a proven pitcher, sure. Not a not one that's we draft. I want to prove it. MLB talent pitcher. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, we're asking for proven MLB talent in exchange for somebody who's projected to be really good. Mm-hmm. It's not crazy you for do. you want to, to keep your ships and keep your really no. good prospects, but sometimes you got to cap in. I said ships. Sometimes you got to cap, <laughs> cap in, cash in your. I can't hear. This is the problem. So I can't hear myself talk. So I got to go one ear out. <laughs> I that's what I'm doing. I'm in one ear too. Yeah. Sometimes you got to cash in your chips, and uh, you know, for a proven player like Brian Reynolds, I, we've already beat the dead this horse. To yeah. Death, right. But um, one sad yeah. thing about the Noel V Marte thing is maybe maybe it wasn't noel Noel v who said this but when we traded somebody in our farm system they actually asked like jerry and company is like is there anything we can do to not get traded like they did not want to leave this organization because they felt the family aspect of it and what the culture that we built which i know i am just talking on and on and on about just because i love it so much uh they were sad they didn't they didn't want to leave and so that's just speaking on what we have built right now and what the curriculum and in process looks like for somebody who gets drafted and developed through our system and so whether they stay here or whether or not we're doing a phenomenal job at building them up so we can keep them so they they are successful on our team or use them as those chips to get that proven talent Mm -hmm. that's what you need in your farm system you have to be able to take them and give them to other teams so that you can acquire proven talent yep that may be the most important part of a farm system well, other we, than we have to other than it. once in a blue moon getting your Julio Rodriguez's. Right, right. But we have to keep in mind, right? Like, what do we value more? Do we do we value a sustainable baseball team that likely makes the playoff every like like every year, or like you know one two years of just like absolute stardom? More it's, likely it's not to make one it or two for, years, two to three, versus like. 10 years like being a powerhouse for 10 like the astros yeah but i mean brian reynolds is a young younger player i mean and i know that when you trade for these guys you can't count on the the second contract but it's it's like we're talking about it if you're if you think that our culture is as strong as as it is and we have all this money to spend it would just behoove us to make him a a nice great offer and sign him yeah well, I uh, think this is a great segue into wrapping up this episode because everything we're talking about right now, we're going to be able to get answered. That's right. Next Friday. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest announcement Monday Mojo has ever released. Um, back when we first started in 2021, we had about four episodes in. I Technically, said, technically it was 2020. Uh, February 2021 was our first episode. Sure, but yep. so we developed the We started idea. in 2021. Yeah. Um, we had four episodes in. I had emailed Jerry Depoto trying to get him on the podcast. I sent the long email. He he politely declined. He responded, in which at that time, you know, we were really young at, uh, in terms of Monday Mojo. And uh, I was like, dope. He responded. And, you know, I didn't get, didn't get him to come on, obviously. Um, it was couple, a good start. A couple more emails sent, including one on November 15th of last year. Jerry Depoto responded, and we are renting a suite in the Silver Cloud Hotel across the street from T-Mobile Park and interviewing the man himself, Jerry DePoto, the president of baseball operations, the architect, the man who has made the Mariners who they are today, Jerry freaking DePoto. We got him. We got him. Biggest guest we've ever had. And uh, we are so excited to chat with the guy. And we want to know what you guys want to know from Jerry. So with that said... (laughs) Uh, you know, in the comments section, put something and what you want to know. We'll, uh, on, uh, yeah, we'll we, we want to know we'll what's on your mind. Favorites. Obviously, we have our own questions developed, but uh, you know, there's a whole lot of questions that we want to ask this man because we're diehard Mariner fans, we always have been, and his job is to please us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not actually I think that's yeah, a result yeah. of his job but it's not his yeah. job it's, it's it's an end result anyway uh yeah please feel free to uh you know send us your questions um because you know we're very excited to, to meet the guy and um um get some answer for you guys 
You guys are going to love it. We are very excited. Um, Is he a bigger guest than Julio Rodriguez? That's what I was thinking myself. I, when you said, I think he is the time, the time we had Julio Rodriguez before he was superstar. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think he is. The Jerry Butler is bigger than. I also really enjoyed having Dave Sims as our very first episode. Yeah. Well, I think what's going to be cool about this interview with Jerry is we're going to be in person with him as well. It's not going to be over Zoom. Like Mm -hmm. it's going to be a legit conversation. And uh, I just want to say shout out to the Cloud Hotel for uh, setting this all up because it's going to be very sick, and you guys will definitely want to tune in. And for our out of town listeners, we'll touch more on this during that episode. we're partnering with Silver Cloud, being able to get the out-of-town listeners, um, in-town listeners, too, discounts to the hotel, which is literally right across the street. So uh, we'll have more on that from the week stadium. From Silver Cloud. It's right across the street right. from the stadium, correct. T-Mobile Park. And so we'll have more on that next week. But uh, I think that's a wrap for today. It's 2023. It's going to be a good year. I can't wait. More things are going to happen. Maybe something happens before we chat with Jerry on Friday. That's right. I'm not sure. The, I have some other news that i'll talk about later i got a monday mojo thing that i'll tell you guys more about uh it's happening tomorrow uh, monday and we'll see what what happens with that with with a media company but i'll touch more on that after after we find out more just some teasers for you but schwab you want to kick them off uh you mean kick them out kick them out kick them off whatever so Eiffel, do you have anything left to say an enum claw an enum claw no Wait, nothing up can here. you can you down can here you just remind us where you actually live again. It's yeah, Tri Cities, yeah, Washington, but which <laughs> Richland? Richland. Richland. You already know. Well, why ask if you already know? I, now that'll I, that'll do it pretty much. I, I do. Max, I think, would be the perfect listener for our podcast because he pretty much is just like asking us. This has nothing to do with Enum Claw. This is more me thinking about him not knowing about Carlos Correa. This is why we Noel we, Marte. He is like our target audience. But the irony is he's the co-host. Yeah. Crazy. You guys nerd out on baseball and I <laughs> learn shit while we talk and do podcasts. This is. Hey, you play your role well, Maxie, though. I, I, I sure do. Listen, like Chris said, it's 2023. We hope that you have some great resolutions out there. If you're not into that shit, good for you. But um, as far as baseball con- is, con- is concerned, the M's are going places this year. Right. Um, and one thing that we need to do a better job of as a podcast too, make sure to like comment, subscribe on all our platforms. Um, Cause we're all over the place, but we need your support. And just like last year and the previous year, we love your support and we love you. And I think most importantly, we love the Mariners. Go ends. Yeah.